Hello and welcome to North Star Stamper. I'm Sue Kramer. Today we're going to use this dry brush big background stamp. Last week I um, asked for suggestions on which stamp I should use and somebody wanted this one and I didn't choose it. So I thought, well, why don't we just start with that one today? I'm trying to find myself on my tablet. It's so fun to interact with you. Let's see. Somebody's joined us. Hello. I can't find myself on here, Melissa. I think that's who I saw. Hello. Um, there we are. Okay, so we're using the dry brush stamp as our kind of our focal point, and I have a lot of samples to show you. That was my contact information. Let me know if I can help you with anything Stampin' Up. I love to chat about Stampin' Up. So I will show you my card first, my sample card. Um, I kind of got it from the catalog, and that was the one um, I showed you in the preview for tonight, if you saw that. So this was, I think, the first card I did. Um, I love this stamp set, too. It's called Ridiculously Awesome. And that is a great sentiment, just for fun, positive times. And so we're going to use bright colors tonight. So deciding on these colors, and these are Rococo Rose, uh, So Saffron, and blushing bride. So to des decide on my colors, I choose a small stamp and then look at the colors I might want to use and then I decide what I want to do from there. So this was kind of my sample and I'll show you how I do that too. We'll decide what colors. There's another one. Obviously you saw saffron, pear pizzazz, and balmy blue. And then here was my next one with uh, Bermuda Bay, pretty peacock, and rich razzleberry. This was one I had done a while ago. They're just all bright, happy, cheerful cards. This one is Flirty Flamingo, Bermuda Bay, and I wanted Rich Razzleberry, but that was kind of dark, so I used Gorgeous Grape on that one. So, let's see. Hello, hello. Oh, a few of you have joined me today. Yay. So we're going to make a card like this. We're going to talk mostly about this big background stamp. And it is large. It's bigger than the size of a card. Let me get that up here. Here's the stamp. And um, I don't have the wood mount. This is the cling mount. You can see how sticky the cling mount is. Where is a card? So it see, it is bigger than the size of a card. And I'll show you real quick how I use these. I don't even mount them. And I'm sure I've talked about this before, but just to remind you, and I want some paper under there. How is everybody today? Thank you for joining me. It was kind of a nice day here in Minnesota. I think it was in the mid-50s. We've already had snow and cold weather and gotten out the winter clothes and all that. But today was a nice fall day. So I'm just inking it with my stamp pad. Uh, can you see? Okay. I think I need another light. How is the lighting? When I sit up, I think I block the light overhead. This is um, Magenta Madness, one of our in colors. Let's get some of this stuff out of the way already. This is my card layer, and I put it right on like that, and I don't have a piece of paper. I'll just use a paper towel, and I just rub it. This is if you want the whole background. You can just kind of tap it in places if you want a little more artistic background and don't want to highlight the background if it's just part of your project. Oh, I'm sticking to the paper. There we go. And there is our card base. That is very bright. One of those times that I might want to put some uh, vellum over the top to tone it down a little bit. Right, I'm just using my paper towel to clean this up a bit. And I'm going to move this out of the way and let that dry for a minute. I'm just going to use my piece of my chamois to clean this. All right, so what colors do you think we should use on a multicolored card? And this is kind of the technique I want to highlight. These are the car bright colors I chose. I don't use Rich Razzleberry very much, and I would um, like to use that. But if not, that'll be my next project. I'll use it on there. Thank you, Ann, for letting me know the lighting was okay. And I've got magenta all over me already. All right, so which colors do you think we should use? 
this is how I decide. I take a small stamp. We're going to use the heart again from this one. Uh, where is it? Or the star. Well, I'll use the heart. That's kind of cute. And then I'm going to put it on a block. Then I have just a scrap piece of paper. And we're going to put these on here and see how they look together. I don't have set colors that I like together. You know what? That's not very sturdy. I can get a better image than that. There we go. Oh, glad I have my chamois handy. So that was Rich Raspberry. What are your go-to colors when you're looking for brights? There is Magenta Madness, one of our in colors. Here's Bermuda Bay. Oh, my fingers are all pinky. Bermuda Bay is a beautiful blue. It's kind of an aqua, but it's very dark. What we could do is just not ink it up as much. I can't go second generation with the technique we're doing today. This is Granny Apple Green. I thought that would be a bright, fun color. Let me make sure this stamp is getting clean. I'm going to clean my fingers a little bit too. Poppy Parade is a go-to for Melissa. Awesome. I, I don't use that very much, Melissa, and I know you chose that for our one of our teen color challenges a couple months back. So you, you got me to use it at least that month. I've been using real red with Christmas things. Oh, this is not the best stamp I have in the shadow there, and that's a Gorgeous Grape. I know I want the magenta because that's the card base I have. How about these three? Or do we want to do the purple? So we're going to use Granny Apple Green, Magenta. Any other input? I don't think I like the um, Rich Razzleberry. You lose out again. I have to use you another day. So the Granny Apple. Let me grab a pen. I have one. Granny Apple, Magenta. Any input? Going, going? Well, we can decide after. We'll start with those two. And let me know if you want Bermuda Bay or Gorgeous Grape. So we're going to do it very much like this card. At first I had the cards just like this with the simple sentiment. And then these are really old. They were called Candy Dots. Long retired Stampin' Up! product. Um, this one has pearls. And then in the sample in the catalog that is on the page with the um, background stamps has some florals or leaf die cuts around the um, sentiment. So that's why I added those after the fact. And I do have some of those cut ready to go. All right. I don't know what color we're using yet, but I'll leave that there. Okay, so we're going to use the Stamparatus. And this is how we get those three colors on one stamp. On a small stamp, you could use markers to get multicolors. On a, um, Melissa says Bermuda Bay. Amber says they're all so pretty. Thank you all for joining me tonight. All right, so our Stamparatus. It comes with these very strong magnets, and there's a storage for them. I only use one at a time. You can use two if you need them. And it comes with two plates. Can you see what I'm doing? Okay. I'm going to lean it on the tripod. Hopefully it won't jiggle the camera at all. I'm going to get some of this out of the way. All right. I think we're good now. So to you do this, because this stamp is so large and I want to be able to use the magnet to hold it down, I have a piece of, um, this is just scrap paper. I did buy the... Um, grid sheets that go in here, which for some te techniques you might want to use the grid. Um, you don't really need it with this, so any scrap paper would protect your surface on your Stamparatus. It is a rubber stamp, so I don't need that black foam piece that comes with um, the Stamparatus. And it's okay if I'm crooked or if I'm off by a little bit, and I'll show you why when we're done. But I'm going to set the stamp right on top of the cardstock and this is just plain regular um, whisper white I'm holding it down with the magnet and I'm going to pick it up with the oh boy words aren't coming to me now let me take a drink 
uh, with the plate. There, that's a good word. We're going to start, hopefully you can see what I'm doing. All right, so in the catalog, um, I looked to see what, or get information about the card they had posted. And we do have access to the recipes for the what products they used and whatever techniques they used. Um, so I did learn this from the Stampin' Up! catalog. So if you ever want to know what products they used on a sample, ask a demonstrator. We can look it up for you. So I have pieces of sponges here. And this is what I didn't do with my first card. I don't know which was my first. This was my first one. Um, which was fine. I, there's some gaps there because I didn't want the colors to overlap very much. But this is what I did with the rest of these. So I have the pad open. I'm going to put... We'll do pink in the middle. And I'm just swiping the, the ink pad on uh, the stamp. It would be better if I had some uh, stamp uh, a case underneath to make it more flat otherwise it tilts down and I make a mess and then we take a sponge I'm gonna get some ink on the sponge and just dab it it'll soften the line um, when it's stamped I want to make sure you can see all right I'm gonna stamp now with the magnet there it's gonna hold it in place you can see I did not get a very good image there so I'm just gonna do it again and push right where I know I have ink, but it didn't stamp. And it could be my table. So I'm going to add more ink. Oh, well, maybe I want it lighter. Because like I said, this is a very bright color. Uh, make sure my... Oh, I do have pink on my hands. Hold on, let me clean up a little bit. I already switched paper towels. That's right. All right. I can push right where I have ink. A little bit more right here. You know what? I'm going to pick it up. My table is too giving. Oh, that's good. All right. Now we're done with this until we're ready to stamp, stamp our sentiment. And paper towel. Let's use that dirty pink one. Just wipe it off. And that magnet's holding it right in place me to finish cleaning off the pink and I think I'm just smearing the pink although it is probably staining my rubber which is fine if I get it clean enough oops uh, if you can see I'm just cleaning it with my wet chamois and make sure I have all the pink off looks good get this sponge out of the way grainy apple green again I'm gonna take my ink pad and just kind of smear it on and I can tell by looking at the stamp that I want it to go almost to this open spot here I'll move those cards I don't want to get those all inky and I have a sponge here that has green on it this one I'm gonna take some ink and this just softens the edge so I don't have the edge of the pad on the stamp anymore because I've um, softened it with the sponge. A little bit more here. That's good. It doesn't have to be as solid as some of my other ones. Okay. Paper towel to clean up some of the ink. Chamois to finish. A wet paper towel would do too if you don't have a chamois. All right. Final color. Do we decide Bermuda Bay? Nobody else has input. Melissa, you get to choose there. We'll use Bermuda Bay. Make sure this is dry. You could do as many colors as you wanted. You could do, go the other way. You could go top and bottom. Um, you can get creative with this technique too. I think that's going to be, well, ah, we'll see. And I think this was my blue sponge. Yep. And take some ink. Just kind of soften that a little bit. Let's see how we did. This little box I made, I just had a piece of scrap, now retired um, cardstock, and I just, I think it was three quarters of an inch. Made a quick box just to hold things on my 
um, desk that I stamp on. I definitely need a new table. Oh, look where they blurred and it's purple. I don't know, can you see that? I'll hold it up. And I need more ink here. I can see I have a white spot there. Did that work? There we go. Give me a little more. That is the great thing about the Stamparatus. You can restamp as many times as you need to. Um, and especially with these big word stamps that we're going to use for our sentiment, um, or anytime you have a solid image, to use the Stamparatus. Um, using the Stamparatus allows you to stamp it multiple times so you get a good image. Because maybe your ink pad isn't juicy enough or... You don't get enough pressure. Or like me, you're working on a non-sturdy surface. So I think that's good. We're going to call that done. So I'm going to remove this plate and get this out of the way. And we'll just put it there. And our sponges can go. So now we can take this off. Can you see? They blurred, or they, they um, blended, and I've got purple. That's kind of cool, actually. The pink and green kind of blend to make brown, but I think it's really pretty. All right, so that is bigger than our card size. So and so we're going to trim it down. And this is where it's kind of fun, and I'll show you inside those cards. Our trimmer. Oh, it does go this way. Oh, boy. I think I'm distracted. All right, so I'm going to leave an edge, so four inches. And you can see I have this nice little border there that's left. So we're going to trim that down. As well. And I did leave a little white border on there. And I'm going to put that on the inside. Oh, sorry. On the inside of my card. I think I did that on several of these cards. It just ties it together. With the lighter colors, I don't always put... And see it happens on most of them. This one I was off crooked, so that one didn't have it. And this one does too. And it just ties the inside to the outside of the card. All right. And our sentiment. I'm going to leave that there to dry. Do we want... Actually, I think I want the other sentiment. The let your faith be bigger than your fear. And I want my magenta. Sorry for my reach. Get my trimmer out of the way. Get my stamparatus back. All these things. I thought this was going to be a quick card. How are we doing on time? Oh, good. Okay. Um, the plates do fit on both the side and what is the top to me. Obviously, that's the side, and this was the bottom to you. But um, And then I have this other side of our... I'm going to put it somewhat in the middle because we're going to use a die. Here, I'll do it this way as you can see. I'm going to pick it up with the plate. Put my stamp set underneath there. Pick it up. Stamp and push on the stamp. Don't push on the plate push on the stamp just like when you're stamping with a block you push on the block oh that's actually pretty good I'm gonna set that aside for just a minute I have trouble with colors like that drying my reds especially take a long time to dry I don't know if it's because I'm in the basement or if it's just our inks do you have trouble with reds drying Melissa you said you use a lot of um, poppy parade do you have trouble with that drying or taking a long time to dry and then you blur it that happens to me a lot especially with our real red so i have to stamp my real red things and then let them sit all right let's put our card together and we will be done um i have some fun embellishments we're going to add to our card okay i think we're done with this there's our magenta Let's put our, th our things back. Oh, actually, we're going to... Um, okay, we're going to trim some paper for the inside. That's kind of bright. And sorry, I don't have a piece handy. So we're going to go four by five and a quarter for the inside. 
and then we'll attach this to it on top or bottom. I don't know which yet. It's trash. And I've been using these dies a lot. These are the Tasteful Labels, and they coordinate with the Tasteful Touches stamp set. I don't think these dies cut out any of the images directly. They're all just labels, and they're which is why they're called Tasteful Labels. And they're just great shapes, and they do layer. I mean, you could layer that on there. And if I remember correctly, where did our image go? I think that one... I think we'll do that real quick. So the, if you're looking for some labels or some dies to cut out images, this is a good one. Again, that's Tasteful Labels. That's in the annual catalog. All right, let's bring our big boss. That's what we're calling it. Can you see that? Sorry, I should raise it a little. So this is our new machine. It came out, when did it come out? August, I think? And they tell you which um, layers you need and which pieces you need. Um, I do have... This one's kind of handy. It is... Oh, sorry. The metallic... Or metal... Magnetic plate. So that when I put this on here, it's not going to move. And then I don't need to use washi tape, which is what I usually use. Then I use a clear plate on top. You can see I've been using that a lot. Oh, I have to finish opening this. Get it started. Wind it through. Trying to keep things clean here. And then that folds up. Sorry, that was probably kind of loud. And it just, it stayed on the um, magnetic platform. It, oh, there we go. All right. Let's put our card together. And I have um, some rhinestones. And then some, these are retired. They're white, perfect accents. That was kind of fun. I used that on a few. And I have some dot ribbon. What's this called? I never learned the names of things. Polka dot tool ribbon. That's really fun and dainty. And then I used a whole bunch of dies to cut some leaves and other things. And we'll see what we want to include. Let me wipe my hands a bit. Make sure I don't get pink on everything. Although it's not a bad color. This one is just so bright. Get my bone folder. I thought it was nice to take a break from Christmas. We did Christmas there a few weeks. Oh, I didn't trim that down, did I? So it's, let's cut the this end. It um, looks like we got more Bermuda Bay than the others. And my adhesive, excuse my reach, using our seal. that. I'm going to put this on the inside. And this is longer, so that'll work. I think that fits. Yep. Melissa, your trick with the seal works perfectly, so I just kind of tip my hand up and keep rolling. There, now the inside coordinates with the outside, and I do have the colors matching. I wasn't sure I did that on, did that the right way. And there's that. Let's use some of these. And these dies are from, let's see if I can test my memory, and I have them if you want to see them. Wild Rose is where those came from. These are from the Flourish, I don't remember. I have them handy. So Wild Rose dies that coordinate with the Tua Wild Rose. These are the Forever Flourishing dies. And then I have, oh, I don't think I cut any. The Birds and More have a, a leaf that would work too, but I didn't cut any of those. I thought this was enough. So let's use some glue dots and put some of these leaves behind. 
I think I mentioned earlier, you could use um, vellum if you want to tone the colors down. I like this. It looks like a, a garland or a... So I'm just going to tear it in half and then use glue dots. Sorry, was I out of camera? I'm going to use glue dots to adhere it to the back, just like that. Where did the other half go? Glue dot. Use my thumb to lift it that there and let's put some of these on the other side one more glue dot stuck to my thumb instead of the leaf stem yeah let's put it there there's that and we need some dimensionals I forgot ribbon. Do we want ribbon? I think we'll pass on the ribbon this time. That's a pretty ribbon. It would work really well, but we'll add some uh, rhinestones instead. But you notice I have a lot of white things. Um, just because I wasn't sure what colors we were going to use. So and any of these leaves would have worked. Um, and it just, I don't know, adds a lot. I got that from the catalog. I like to learn from the catalog. All right. And I think I cut these open. No, I didn't. I'm going to use my take your pick tool to pull these rhinestones off. Uh, let's see if I can reach around the camera real quick. Sorry, I'm not watching comments. Melissa also stands in the basement, but she has not noticed ink's taking extra time to dry. Maybe it's just me. I don't know. Maybe I have a heavy hand. So I'm just picking them up. I'm scooping underneath to pick up the glue. There's a glue dot under there. This one actually stuck to my finger instead of my card. Three. I think we'll go more. They say to do things in odd numbers and to make a triangle out of them. Or maybe we'll use one more big one. How about right there? And that's our card for today. So that's the dry brush um, background stamp with the Stamparatus to get multiple colors on it. thought that was really fun. And obviously I got carried away because I have so many cards to show you. Thank you for joining me. Um, if you ever have any requests, I do take requests for projects or stamps. I think somebody wanted to see this stamp last week and I didn't use it. Excuse my reach. Um, so that's where I got the idea from for today. So if there's a stamp set you want to see or a die or a technique or whatever, uh, I am working on Christmas decorations for our my home. So that'll be coming in a couple weeks. I want a lot of samples to show you before I do that. So that'll probably be mid-November before I do that. I guess it's already the first. Thank you for joining me. Happy stamping. Take care.